So face rush Darius is coming back and Irelia now builds Black Cleaver. All right, summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Christoph, and today I'll be covering all the trending builds that have surfaced in Korean solo queue. We've pulled a bunch of information from Korean solo queue for you guys. These builds are brand new, so you'll definitely be able to abuse them as your opponents probably don't know about them. And for our question of the day, what is the most underrated rune? So for me, I think a lot of people forgot about Phase Rush. The amount of movement speed it provides is pretty insane, and movement speed in general is quite underrated. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And for all of you guys who are interested in climbing the ranks this season, don't forget to go to ProGuides.com using the description link below. We've got a ton of resources to help you guys out, especially our challenger coaches who are online right now, ready to help you guys climb the ladder. All right, let's get into the video. Okay, so let's start with the new Irelia build that has surfaced in Korean solo queue. We'll admit though, it's uncertain whether or not it's a Korean one that started this. TF Blade is currently playing solo queue in Korea, running this build on her on his journey to hit rank one. This build is slowly catching on, so make sure to hop on the hype train before it's too late. The runes are pretty typical and you can adjust them to your taste. TF Blade is the kind of guy who 1v9s his games, as we all know, so he opts to take Legend Bloodline as well as Coup de Gras. You're free to change those up for whichever substitutes you want, but the item build is the real topic to discuss. For the first two items, you're going to be building a Trinity Force followed by a Black Cleaver. This is an item combination that's gone down as taboo for a long time because of their duplicate passives. In theory, this makes having the two items inefficient because they both have the same unique passive, Rage, which means they will not stack on top of each other. However, upon further analysis, you'll come to understand that honestly, it doesn't even matter. Even without either of its two passives, Black Cleaver is an item that pays itself off exactly in terms of gold value. Trinity Force comes close, but falls just short of being a gold efficient item without its passives. At the end of the day though, you can still justify buying both by calculating that extra movement speed onto Trinity Force's gold value, since Black Cleaver already pays itself off. With the changes to Conqueror this season, it's gotten a bit harder for champions to take on tanks. Black Cleaver's Armor Shred is a great remedy to those changes, and as tanks become even more popular next patch as we know all those item buffs, this is going to be a strong build. The strongest part about this build, however, is the fact that you'll have a 40% cooldown reduction with only two items. That is insane, and your mid-game power spike with Aurelia is already ridiculously strong, and once you finish Black Cleaver, it is going to be crazy. If you thought she dashed around a lot before, imagine her with a 40% cooldown reduction. Following this, you see some pretty typical items to round out the build, like a Ninja Tabby, Wit's End, Titanic Hydra, and Guardian Angel which provide Aurelia some well-needed tankiness while simultaneously supplementing her damage. Our next top lane build is going to be one that doubles in the mid lane, Full Tank Kassadin. Okay, so it sounds pretty troll, but Kassadin is a champion that already has so much late game power built into his design. Even if you build him tanky, he still does an impressive amount of damage and he cannot be ignored. For his runes, you'll want to run Unsealed Spellbook, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Time Warp Tonic, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. The reason you take Unsealed Spellbook is because you're going to be running Exhaust and Barrier as your summoner spells. These two summoner spells will make it so you can survive against basically any opponent. If you're a cast in main, you will know that he is weak to all ends before level 6, so having some damage reduction as well as the shield from Barrier makes it significantly easier to make it out of the earlier stages of the game. By running Unsealed Spellbook, you can switch to Teleport, Flash, or whatever else you'll need later in the game. Okay, so for the items, you're going to start with either a Corrupting Potion or a Spell Thief's Edge. If you're in a matchup that's so difficult that you can't even touch the minion wave, you'll want to take Spell Thief's Edge to remedy this. Poke your opponents with your Q and then just chill early on so you can at least secure a little bit of gold. You'll of course want to build a Corrupting Potion for the extra sustain following your first recall. When things aren't that grim, then you can start with one instead. So Sunfire Cape received some buffs this patch, and 
Well, here we go again. Buff a tank item and bruisers find some way to abuse it. Picks like Renekton and Mordekaiser are starting to add Sunfire Capes to their arsenal. You don't need to rush one when you play them, but definitely take it into consideration. The reason that Sunfire Cape is such a good pickup is quite simple. It gives you damage and armor. If you're against a champion that deals a ton of physical damage and you need some armor, why not just pick up the Sunfire Cape? It scales well into the late game as well. It deals more damage as you build more health. Naturally, a lot of bruiser items like Black Cleaver, Sterex Gage, or even Leandri's Torment provide health as well. Get the idea? The rest of the build is nothing that special, but it wouldn't surprise me if people started building even more tank items on bruisers like Thorn Mail or Randuin's Omen when needed. You'll build a Black Cleaver, Ninja Tabby, Sunfire Cape, Titanic Hydra, Sterex Gage, and wrap it up with a Spirit Visage. Essentially, you're going to be quite tanky while also dealing a ton of damage. And with that being said, I'm sure that someone will be saying top difference in all your chats. A build that's new, or I guess old actually, is Phase Rush Darius. We already hate that guy, but we hate him even more when he's fast. I mean, that's supposed to be one of his weaknesses, right? Easy to kite, immobile, well, I guess not. Players have started running this into matchups where their only issue is getting kited. Conqueror is easily the best rune on Darius, but sometimes it's just not the right move to run it. Damage is only useful if you can actually hit your opponent, so you gotta get to them first. By taking Phase Rush, Darius has an easier time sticking onto his enemies. For some even more mobility, you can opt to take Ghost instead of Teleport as well. For the most part, this is what Darius players have been doing anyway since it'll make it harder to get away from him. For his runes, you'll want to take Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Gathering Storm, Triumph, and Legend Tenacity. For his items, you'll want a Trinity Force, Ninja Tabby, Sterex Gage, Spirit Visage, Dead Man's Plate, and a Randuin's Omen. Taking Nimbus Cloak on top of Face Rush provides Darius even more movement speed when committing for kills. However, you can instead replace this with Nullifying Orb if you don't think you'll need that extra movement speed to beat your opponents. You can also trade out Celerity if you'd prefer to take Transcendence. It just comes down to whether you like the cooldown reduction or movement speed more. His items are nothing out of the ordinary. You want a Trinity Force alongside all those tank items so that Darius can survive fights while having enough damage to take out his priority targets. Okay, so we're gonna be putting those builds up on the screen one last time as we head into the jungle. This first jungle build might be a blast from the past for you guys. Well, except that it's on a different AP champion this time. Tank Jungle Silas is hitting Summoner's Rift. As usual, some assassin type champion is going to find some way to make tank items work. Silas with these items reminds me of the good old days of Tank Echo. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then that's great. You don't want to know. For this build, let's start off with his runes. He'll take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Ravenous Hunter, and Eyeball Collection. Silas thrives when he's low, so you'll definitely want to take Last Stand on him. The other runes are pretty straightforward, and since he's a bit tankier with this build, having some extra tenacity makes Silas even harder to deal with. For items, you'll build a Runic Echoes followed by Merc Treads, Iceborne Gauntlet, Spirit Visage, Leandri's Torment, and a Magi's Soul Stealer. The last two items can quite frankly be whatever you want them to be, but the combination of Iceborne Gauntlet and Spirit Visage are just too good to pass up. They make Silas tanky, allow him to max out his cooldown reduction, and allow him to stick harder. But if you thought he was bad enough, Silas gets some extra slows with Iceborne Gauntlet, as well as increased healing from Spirit Visage. Pretty much everything that makes him good just got better with this build. So for those of you who aren't aware, you'll also want to make sure that you pay attention to which abilities you max first. Players are now maxing W, then E, then Q, so just be aware of that. Since you're going to be using Conqueror alongside a Spirit Visage, maxing out that healing is super important. Also, Q isn't nearly as reliable as before, so you'll instead want to max the ability that's the easiest to utilize, which is his W. Our next jungle build is going to be for Echo. And thankfully, we're not bringing back Tank Echo. A trending new build in Korea involves building a Nasher's Tooth on him. Misfits Razorg actually built this during his LEC match versus G2 Esports, so you know that it even has the professional player seal of approval. One thing about this build is that it's actually optimal to take attack speed as your adaptive stat. 
This will help you clear your jungle more efficiently. While you'd normally feel kind of bad giving up some AP to do this, this ends up being efficient in the long run because you're building a Nasher's Tooth anyway. The build goes something like this. For items, you'll want Runic Echoes, Sorcerer's Shoes, Proto Belt, Nasher's Tooth, Death Cap, and Zanyas. Runes are pretty standard. You'll want Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Legend Tenacity, and Coup de Gras. You can, of course, swap these runes out according to your own preference. Nasher's Tooth is a great pickup on Echo for many reasons. First of all, he's going to get 20% cooldown reduction from it, which is huge. Alongside Runic Echoes and Protobelt, you'll already max out your cooldown reduction at only three items. The bonus attack speed is definitely nice to have in longer fights because it makes it easier to activate Echo's passive. And it also allows him to utilize the damage portion of his W more effectively. With all these jungle builds, I briefly want to mention that there are a lot of new builds for all the new unconventional junglers. However, we'll release a video about that sometime in the near future, so keep your eyes peeled. That's it for the jungle. Take a look at those builds one last time on the screen as we head over to the mid lane. Aside from the Cassidy build we mentioned earlier, another mid lane build that's hitting Summoner's Rift is Senna with Grasp of the Undying. This rune setup increases Senna's poke damage and gives her access to a bunch of other runes that she can take advantage of. Demolish is theoretically great on ranged champions. They can often activate it for free against less threatening foes, guaranteeing some easy turret plating. Bone plating is nice to have as well, as Senna struggles when her opponents are able to all in her. And bone plating should help mitigate this. Overgrowth is a nice little touch as it'll make Senna a little bit tankier, while Minion Dematerializer helps her out with her wave clear, and Time Warp Tonic supplements her Corrupting Potion start. For her items, you'll want to go for a standard lethality build. Ghostblade, Dustblade, Edge of Night, Ionian Boots, Mortal Reminder, and Guardian Angel should give Senna the lethality she needs to burst down her targets, as well as a ton of cooldown reduction. This setup should give Senna the tools she needs to survive in the mid lane and scale up to her powerful late game. It was a pretty short one, but that was it for the mid lane. But once again, you should note that you can still run that Tank Cassidy build in the mid lane as well. We're gonna show you guys those builds one last time as we head over to the bot lane. In the bottom lane, we're seeing a bunch of mages messing around with Phase Rush as well as Hextech GLP. The combination of this keystone and item creates an insane movement speed advantage of your opponents. Tagging someone with Hextech GLP's slow leads to an easy follow up from there, so you're also able to activate Phase Rush to make sure your enemies can't get away. On the flip side, this combination also allows you to escape from even the stickiest of situations. Slow the bad guys chasing you, hit them with some of your spells, and then book it. We're seeing champions like Syndra, Velkaz, and Talia running it down as bot laners. For the runes, you'll run Phase Rush, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery. For items, you'll want a Hextech GLP, Morella Nomicon, Sorcerer's Shoes, Death Cap, Void Staff, and Zanya's Hourglass. It's a very typical mage build aside from the Hextech GLP. What makes this item so great is the fact that in spite of having a powerful active, it's still an incredibly cost-effective item. Essentially, it replaces Luden's Echo, trading in a little bit of ability power and cooldown reduction for a ton of utility. The active of Hextech GLP does slightly more damage than Luden's passive, so overall, you'll do about the same amount of damage with either as a standalone item. Another build that is on the rise, which is a strange one, is Grasp of the Undying Caitlyn. She received some buffs this patch, so I'd heavily suggest giving this one a try. She is really similar to Senna running it in the mid lane. Caitlyn is a champion that relies heavily on poking down her opponents, so Grasp of the Undying naturally has synergy with her. For the runes, you'll want to run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. The Resolve Tree is a powerful addition to Caitlyn's kit for the same reasons as it is on Senna. Demolish helps Caitlyn take turrets even faster, and Bone Plating will help her out in trades. Grasp is also a decent replacement to Fleet Footwork, as it'll provide a bit of well-needed sustain while she trades some basic attacks with her opponent. The item build is a standard Caitlyn build, Storm Razor, Berserker's Greaves, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, Phantom Dancer, and Mortal Reminder. Yet another champion taking Grasp of the Undying is going to be an even more surprising one, Kog'Maw. In most cases, Kog'Maw can only get one or two auto attacks during trades since he has no way of sticking onto his opponents. He'll activate W and then auto attack his enemies once and they'll run away. Grasp of the Undying charges up this one auto attack and lets Kog'Ma get a little bit more value out of it. For the runes, you'll want to run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery. The most significant rune in this setup, aside from Grasp, is going to actually be Bone Plating. 
Kog'Maw's all-ins are actually very, very strong. The issue is surviving long enough to maximize his damage. And that's where Bone Plating comes in. Bone Plating gives Kog'Maw a little bit more tankiness, so he'll have the opportunity to really get the most out of his W and ultimate. Again, his item build is pretty much a typical on-hit one. You'll want to run Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker's Greaves, Ginsu's Rageblade, Runan's Hurricane, Wit's End, and Phantom Dancer. We're throwing those bot lane builds one last time as we wrap it up with support. First up for supports is going to be Sona with a pretty interesting adaptation. For runes, you're going to be taking Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. You definitely want to take Scorch with this build because you're opting for a ton of aggression with it. For her items, you're going to be building a Shard of True Ice, Kerch's Shard, Athene's Unholy Grail, Ardent Sensor, Ionian Boots, and a Locket of the Iron Solari. If you end up snowballing hard though, you can transition into a full AP build with Lich Bane and the like. You heard it right though, you're building a Kircha Shard. You're going to be rushing one as soon as you can because of the power spike it provides and because it's so cheap. You get 80 damage with its passive for only 700 gold. Sure, it's not like building damage or AP, but if you play around the energized passive, you're going to be getting a ton of value from it. Two BF Swords would provide 80 attack damage, but would cost you 2600 gold instead. As Sona, you're not going to be looking for all-ins anyway. Ideally, you want those one basic attack trades, so you don't have to adapt your playstyle at all when you're going this build. Once the game progresses, you can sell this item for something better, but the early game power spike it provides should give you some well-needed leverage during the laning phase. Next up for supports, we have a new Senna build. A bunch of Korean players are now building Athene's Unholy Grail as their third or fourth item. Senna is one of the best supports at taking advantage of this passive because she's constantly dealing damage during team fights. Athene's allows you to build up 35% of the damage you deal as blood stacks, which can then be used to increase the healing or shields you grant allies. Senna's Q and R are great ways to activate this, and because of how short her Q's cooldown gets later into the game, this means a lot. Senna can fully stack up the blood charges several times over the course of fights and maximize the healing she can grant her allies. It's honestly kind of shocking when you see the amount of burst healing she provides. For her runes, you'll be running Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. Take Scorch for some more lane power since Senna already has incredible scaling with her passive. Airy further synergizes with Athene's as Senna will shield her allies on top of healing them. For items, build a Black Mist Scythe, Boots of Swiftness, Umbral Glaive, Athene's and Holy Grail, Edge of Night, and a Guardian Angel. Umbral Glaive is another great pickup in this build as it'll equip Senna with even more vision denial, making it even harder for her opponents to know what's happening on the map. All right, guys, that's a wrap for supports, so make sure to check out those builds one last time on the screen as we conclude the video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content, then leave us a like. And if you guys want to get better at League of Legends, make sure to click that description link below to go to proguides.com and find your challenger coach right now. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and I'll see you on the Rift.